mighty, mysterious, sometimes forbidding, often life-giving. The sea is close to us in the Caribbean, but its surface waters hide a world often unseen to all but the daring. If we could only look below the surface of the waters, what a world we would see! The still, dark waters of mangrove lagoons are home to millions of creatures above and below the surface. A little farther out, there are seagrass beds where turtles and conch feed close to coral reefs. Both of these habitats are home for a host of tiny creatures that find a place to grow up in safety away from hungry predators. It's a world so easily ignored and forgotten, we see so little of it on the surface. Between the seagrass beds of our shallow coastal waters and the deep ocean, there is the multicolored underwater world of coral reefs. An array of fish adds to the kaleidoscope, and reefs are also home to delicious food favorites of many Caribbean people and our visitors. Our Caribbean Sea that we often take for granted has become the focus of international attention as environmental awareness has grown across the world. Beginning in 1972 in Stockholm, Sweden, at the historic United Nations Conference on the Human Environment, high-level discussions on global environmental crises led to the formation of the United Nations Environment Programme, commonly called UNEP. Soon after, in 1974, UNEP launched its Regional Seas Programme with the Caribbean Sea identified as one of the most important regions. Why the Caribbean Sea? Like many other seas and oceans on our planet, it is now under severe threat and yet our livelihoods depend on it. Sewage and other wastes are spoiling the quality of our coastal waters, contaminating fish and wildlife and slowly poisoning us when we eat them. Even sea bathing can become dangerous to the health of locals and tourists alike. Chemicals from agricultural runoff Pesticides and fertilizers, as well as industries closer to the shore, are stealthily depositing contaminants into our beautiful, once pristine waters. From the forested hillsides where the springs begin, as well as their underground water sources, to rivers that course down to the seas, many are being contaminated. Wastes from mining, households without proper sewage services, and careless applications of fertilizers and pesticides are only some of the threats to our precious drinking water supplies. As human health suffers as a result of this pollution, so too does the life of a myriad of creatures which live inland and move and depend on a clean water supply to survive. When the water supply is compromised, wildlife suffers and eventually species are lost. The rise in global temperatures has already affected the sensitive coral reefs, reducing tremendously their strength and the first natural barrier on our coasts against the impact of hurricanes and storms. In 1976, at the request of Caribbean governments, the Caribbean Environment Program, known as SEP, was launched by UNEP to tackle our environmental problems. SEP serves all of the countries of the wider Caribbean, from the Bahamas in the north to Guyana in the south. It could have seemed like wishful thinking. So many countries, so many problems. How could we solve them? The Caribbean Environment Program is administered from the Caribbean Regional Coordinating Unit, or RCU, in Kingston, Jamaica. This agency works to encourage, coordinate and harmonize the efforts of governments, technical people, scientists, lawmakers and everyday people so that the whole region can develop economically without destroying the natural environment on which development depends. The generous voluntary support of Caribbean member governments goes a long way to provide financial backing for the SEP and its work. Other funding comes from development agencies, the Global Environment Facility and the public and private sectors for projects and activities in the countries themselves. The United Nations Environment Programme, or UNEP, which has its headquarters in Nairobi, Kenya, administers the Caribbean Trust Fund to which the governments contribute. Over the last 20 years, the Caribbean Environment Programme, CEP, has mobilized in excess of $100 million for 
support projects and activities in the wider Caribbean. Member countries identify their areas of greatest need and SEP works with them to support, design and implement projects that will make a difference. The need for willing donors to sustain this work is a growing concern in this region of seemingly overwhelming needs and limited resources. These efforts to wisely manage the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea and the coastlines that border them have been guided by a legal mandate worked out by Caribbean governments in 1983 at the city of Cartagena de Indias in Colombia, the Convention for the Protection and Development of the Marine Environment of the wider Caribbean region, otherwise known as the Cartagena Convention. Through SEP's work, many governments have developed laws and regulations to safeguard beaches and recreational areas from pollution, and to protect public health and coastal-based industries such as tourism and fisheries. Follow-up legal agreements to the Cartagena Convention, called protocols, deal with specific issues and must be signed and agreed to by specified numbers of Caribbean governments before they come into effect. The first is the protocol concerning cooperation in combating oil spills. Those nations which have already signed on agreed to help prevent oil spills and to take swift, decisive actions to remedy the situation in the unfortunate case of an oil spill in the marine environment. The Regional Maritime Pollution Emergency Information and Training Center, Rampaitic, Caribe, in Curaçao, is the Regional Activity Center or RAC for this protocol. So far, it has trained over 500 people in member countries to be better able to respond to oil spills in the region. The second protocol of the Cartagena Convention is concerned with specially protected areas and wildlife. Known as the SPORE Protocol, it seeks to preserve natural places recognized as being important and of special value. It also protects threatened and endangered wildlife. One happy result of SEP's involvement in this area is that marine turtle populations across the region have stabilized in recent years. The regional activity center which supports this protocol is in Guadeloupe. The third protocol of the Cartagena Convention, the protocol concerning land-based sources of marine pollution, known as the LBS protocol, recognizes the negative impact that many of our activities inland are having on our coastal waters. There are two regional activity centers for this protocol, one in Cuba at the Center of Engineering and Environmental Management of Coasts and Bays known as CMAB and the other at the Institute of Marine Affairs in Trinidad and Tobago. The SAP encourages individual countries to commit to these protocols and incorporate them into their national legislation. SAP also works on the ground in its member countries to raise public awareness of environmental issues and to educate people of all sectors of society on sustainable development issues. Several projects are presently underway in member states that address a variety of concerns, for although the sea joins us, our needs may differ on the land. From groundwater management in the limestone islands of Antigua, Barbados and Bahamas, to reducing runoff from mountainous watershed areas in Haiti, Jamaica and St. Lucia. From the control of industrial and oil pollution in Mexico, Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago, to the ecotourism efforts in Belize, Costa Rica and Dominica. The problems are many and varied, but the Caribbean Environment Program is committed to work with differing groups of people throughout the region to make things better. As Caribbean people, we may have our differences, but we have common hopes and needs. Hopes for sustained livelihoods in fishing and agriculture, industry and tourism, needs for a safe and secure food supply, jobs and incomes, desires that there will always be places of beauty and solitude for our relaxation and recreation. The Caribbean Environment Program uses these unifying elements to build commitments at regional, national and community levels that will bring about real change. SAP brings together all Caribbean people by providing expertise, giving access to technology, finding adequate funding and providing hope across the divides of language, culture and geography. 
Dive a little deeper and discover the beauty of our underwater worlds. Look a little closer and realize that though we may seem to be a mass of very different people, the Caribbean Sea is our common heritage. Let us all hope a little longer. The Caribbean Environment Program offers itself to be the caretaker of the Caribbean, managing our rich natural resources so they'll be there for others to enjoy tomorrow.